What's up, everybody? It's Brandon from Box Office Banner and Cult Flick Symposium, and I'm here to talk some more Fast and the Furious. Today's review comes in the form of the third installment. Not much maligned, but definitely one that is forgotten the most out of the mix. I have at least heard some people say, you can skip right over this one because what's the point? Obviously, Lewis Black would come back to reprise his role later on, you know, at least just a little bit, a little bit. <laughs> but this movie feels very, you know, off. And then, of course, Han, you know, he becomes a big part of everything. But that was even before, you know, you get the little cameo at the end of the movie where Vin Diesel already knew him. They could have easily tied that in. This movie feels the most unnecessary out of all these movies. This is where Fast and the Furious went to die. And then it came back. And everybody was like, oh, my God, Vin Diesel, Paul Walker. Half the people didn't even go see Tokyo Drift were like, at least we're past that piece of shit. This movie could get some cult status. I really think that over time, especially the way these Fast and Furious movies keep pumping out and the more not just us, but like our kids will probably go back and watch this franchise because there is something about, you know, even if you're not a big fan of it, you like are of whatever, you know, the hot movie is that like your parents fucking push on you when you're a kid. You know how that is. But like if it's like a huge franchise, like you end up watching it some way or another. Like that's what I did with like Friday the 13th and all the horror franchises. If there's a movie with multiple mo or franchise, I guess I should say, if there's a franchise with multiple movies within the franchise, like three, four, five, at least five or more you somehow stumble into catching at least most of them. So I could see this movie only growing in popularity. And again, cult popularity. Not like, oh my God, this is the most popular one all of a sudden. Obviously not. But this movie seems to at least get more recognition than it used to. Because I used to not even hear this talked about. I remember I was one of those people that skimped on it. I was like, I don't even care to fucking see it. I'm done. Now, Paul, first Vin Diesel. Now, Paul Walker's gone. And then you bring in Tyrese. It was a good addition. Now, where the hell is he? Now, we got Bow Wow. Where well, we just going to bounce around new rappers? And now we have the weakest one. It just seemed pointless to me. But I watched it later on. And I don't know if it was low expectations, but this movie had me from the jump. From like the first race scene, I was like, I'm actually into this. And speaking of racing, I kind of touched on Too Fast, Too Furious being more race driven. This one is even more that way. This is the best racing movie amongst all the Fast and Furious movies. Sure, there's some action and shit like that, but it feels like everything, first and foremost, has to do with the race. And remember how I said there was more camaraderie amongst the vehicle and the people in it like they were treating it with more respect so the vehicle almost felt like an extension of themselves rather than just like let me show off my skills in this new hot ride that too fast and the furious did this one not only amps up the racing it kind of takes it back to that original feel was lewis black you know he's a guy that's going to turn some wrenches his dad's the same way and it's the whole just like old adage he's got like this kind of shitty car in comparison where he's just like you know like it's the driver not the car there's something to this movie that makes the cars feel more special rather than just being like yeah we're just going to street race these and who can help but love the drift man even as a guy that's not a huge car fan there's something about drifting that has always been so fucking cool to me i can't even lie and the way they play it out on screen, it looks damn good. Like, there's a lot of scenes once, you know, of course, Lewis Black gets the hand of it, hang of it, not hand of it. It really looks good, I think, on camera. Like, I get very engaged. But before then, even before that happened, I really like the muck it up, more, again, gritty type of race before we get into the more flashy type of race that he has with the one douchebag from the school that throws a baseball through his window. And what's with that girl, man? Douchebag or not, like, that's kind of fucked up. Because they're trying to figure out, it's just like, I only trade for pink slips. And he's like, the douchey kid, which again, douche, but still, is like, like I'm not taking that rusty piece of junk. And the girl, his girlfriend, just offers up, like, winner can have me. Now, even if she thinks her boyfriend's going to fucking win, like, no man, like, your girlfriend says that? Like, you're just like, okay, look, 
I think I'm going to win, obviously, but you're not going to put your, as my girlfriend, your body on the line to roll with him. Like, that shit, dude, is fucked. <laughs> Come on, man. You know you'd be like, what the fuck, Susie? Yeah, as if girls were named Susie in 2023, or I guess 20-whatever-the-fuck. 2000-something. Doesn't happen. Don't know why that name came to mind, but you get the point. It's just, it's ridiculous. Every time I see that scene, I'm like, damn. I mean, I would not be happy about that. And I'm not even the jealous type. <laughs> be like, what the fuck is that? What do you mean you're offering it? What if he does something? What if I get a flat tire? You're just going to go with him? We've been dating all high school. Of course, you know. I don't know how long they were dating, but that's a little scene I'm always like, what the fuck is this right now? That girl really just said that shit? Granted, again, douchebag. Maybe he deserved it. Looks like he deserved it. But, all right, retract every statement. You know what I mean, though. It's just always like, damn, like, that kind of rubs me the wrong way. <laughs> but the movie, you know, it chugs along at a decent pace. Again, I think there's a little more, I guess, heart here, and then we kind of get a fresh start here, rhymed unintentional, to where it feels like once the movie does start to work, you become open to the possibilities of just like, what if this isn't the last one? What can, where can we go? It's like we're opening a new umbrella, and we're starting to really get engaged in a different way to where the second one, it was engaging as just like, okay, a continuation, but we're kind of moving on past the greatness of the first so it's like a lesser continuation this one feels like okay this can kind of be its own thing i'm curious and maybe they can push forward with this so that adds an interesting element to it once you realize oh shit hey i actually like tokyo drift what the fuck is going on here now again moving on to the drifting once that shit kicks off dude that whole scene and you know what i actually am gonna backpedal because let's talk about Han and like the fucking Yakuza and shit like that. I will say it's one thing about this movie that kind of falls like on its face at times. It's such a weird dynamic of like high school drama mixed with like legitimate beef that like it just feels uneven a lot to me. Like it's just this high school guy is mixed up with this other guy and there's Yakuza ties and it's just like. And it's just so unbelievable. And, like, the poor fucking dad, he's over here. Like, just imagine being this dad. Like, he takes him out to Tokyo because he's over there racing. And now he's in Tokyo. He's not only racing. It's like, yeah, now I'm racing against the Yakuza. And then, like, people are dying. And I might die. Who knows what can happen. You'd be like, what the fucking fuck, son? What are you doing? It's just a little ridiculous if you look at a paper. But then again... Let's look how ridiculous this franchise got. It just feels the most, like, uneven in terms of, like, battles, I got, for whatever reason, with bad guy, bad versus good. But I'm not here to diss. You know, you, you could disagree with me there, whatever you want to do, because I'm not dissing this movie. I actually really enjoy this movie, as you can probably tell. But that's, like, the one thing that feels a little, I don't know. It's, like, when he's battling one dude, it's got a great soundtrack. Let me go ahead and say that. This is probably my favorite soundtrack, at least for the first three movies but uh, when he's battling one dude, it almost feels like Disney-ish with a little bit of edge, but somehow still works. And then now he's supposed to be battling the Yakuza. It just feels a little weird in terms of balance. And then Bow Wow, you know, it's, it's Bow Wow. It's these rappers in these movies. They don't do too good other than Tyrese. And then, of course, Luda gets better as it goes down the road. But he's not as terrible as you think he is. But he's still, it's still Bow Wow. It's kind of like, eh. Could have got a better person. Lewis Black, though, I think does a damn good job overall. Every, just from what you, he was given and like having to play this type of character in this movie, from what we were accustomed to, he somehow like isn't like just, oh my God, he's awesome, but he, it somehow just works. It really does. Maybe it's the just the what you just assume the movie would be and then it somehow is like so much better than that that really helps him in that regard. But overall, he gives a good performance. And speaking of his dad... I really do like the way his dad has his back. You kind of get like the moment in the garage with them again, again, kind of pulling us more into like how important these cars are and, and amongst this franchise and like how the we behind the wheel is like an extension of yourself. You get that feel with his dad. You see how much his dad really cares. And you see, even though he seems like he's being uptight, his dad was ready to go to war with him. I love that. And then the shit that happens with Han, dude, this is where we really get to see Han and Han, dude, might be again like Roman. He's in the mix for like my favorite character. Like every time I watch this franchise, I think I have a different one. I think Han is probably my favorite character or has been the most when I've watched these movies. <laughs> but Roman's always right there. It's probably between them two. And Han, as cool as he was in this movie, dude, cool as a fucking cucumber, man. Uh, 
dies. And this is where we're not quite there yet, but this was a good ending for Han. He was a cool one-off character. Now he probably wouldn't be my favorite character in the franchise. So I guess I have, you know, some gratefulness for that. But the fact that he comes back from this, it just, I just, this is, this is kind of like the beginnings in later movies that really just mess things up. Now, it doesn't mess things up here because it's a standalone movie at this time. You know, when 3 was made, these plans, I'm assuming, weren't even made, you know, going into the future. But sometimes a later movie with decisions can kind of damper the mood of older movies. It doesn't do it completely here, but this Han should have died, man. It's a little extra. It's a little much. It's the franchise pushing it too much, and we'll dive more into that when we actually get there. But Han was just great in this movie. So actually, between Han and Lewis Black, I got better characters than I thought. Um, the Yakuza like kids, I guess, uh, that are drifting their life away, <laughs> if you will, they're okay. They're not. They're nothing special. They're just, you know, they're fine. They're not bad. Not good. Sometimes I get like a little corny vibe from them. But given the movie and the expectations, I think, like I said, with Lewis Black's character, not as much to that, that degree, but it kind of works overall. And then, uh, of course, that last little drag race, dude other than the one that, like, Han died in, because that was really dope, the way they were just, especially when that big crowd of people opened up and they just kind of slowly drifted around them. Love that. But the last one, just on that mountain and watching it all come to fruition with, you know, Lewis Black's character just, like, finally getting the niche of it, finally getting the hang of it, just feeling it out and taking dude to town and nearly dying multiple times going off a cliff. Like, how could you agree to do this? <laughs> And then you got, uh, at the very end, of course, the cameo that was kind of touching on with Vin Diesel. Like, that was just awesome to see, especially, like, not seeing this movie. I had not seen four yet when I finally watched this, but, you know, I let some time pass. I was like, oh, shit. Like, I was surprised the whole movie. So, like, and then when Vin Diesel came on, it was, like, that last little bit that was like, oh, man, like, and Vin Diesel in the cameo, and he knew Han, who's my favorite character in the movie. I'm feeling this. And next thing you know... I was shocked when I first watched this movie. Not because it's this amazing movie, but, like, again, expectations. Like, what the fuck? Like, why was I sleeping on this so hard? And I, I, mean, I actually have my answer there. It sounds crazy now that you know, you know, because hindsight's twenty twenty. But looking at it on paper, this looked like this was going to be damn rusty, and rusty it was not. Again, I think the best racing film amongst the entire franchise. This movie, damn good. Really good. Really good. Was it a step up from two? Was it better than one? Who knows, man? Not revealing that to the end, but very good. Tokyo Drift, dare I say, underrated. Yes, sir. I will be back with Fast and the Furious 4. I love you guys. P -p Peace.